I'm going to go over 10 of the so-called um, overlooked provisions. Uh, we'll probably be doing three, three, and four in the uh, uh, three segments of this webinar. The extent of coverage is not identical for all 10. Number one, the engineer shall determine the suitability of all joint details to be used in a welded structure. The engineer shall determine the suitability of all joint details to be used in a welded structure. Where you ask, do I find that provision? Well, it's in clause 1.4.1 of D1.1. Now, for your benefit, anytime I have a slide that has the format that I'm showing you, uh, this is an exact quotation out of the Structural Welding Code. And highlighted in yellow, we see the words that are essentially the first principle. The engineer shall determine the suitability of all joint details to be used in a welded structure. I assume everyone is familiar with the so-called pre-qualified joint details. You find these in D1.1. You also find them in your steel manual. Far too often, engineers assume that if pre-qualified joint details are employed, there is no obligation on their part to evaluate the suitability of those joints. And even a more dangerous assumption is that all pre-qualified joint details are somehow foolproof and suitable for every single application. This is not the case, and I'd like to try to explain why that's the situation. We can also read these words in the code. <clears throat> the pre-qualified joint details have repeatedly demonstrated their adequacy in providing the conditions and clearances necessary for depositing and fusing sound weld metal to base metal. And that's true. It goes on to say, this. However, the use of these details shall not be interpreted as implying consideration of the effects of welding processes on base metal beyond the fusion boundary, nor the suitability of the joint detail for a given application. Nor the suitability of the joint detail for a given application. Let's take an example and analyze it. We're going to analyze it in terms of whether the joint is pre-qualified and then whether it's suitable for a given application. What you see on the screen is known as a TCU4AGF joint detail. It has a prescribed root opening R and a prescribed included angle alpha. The material shown in the light blue is thickness T1, and in gray, thickness T2. Let's now add on some dimensions that might be applied to a given project. For starters, I want to look at a quarter inch root opening, a quarter, uh, 45 degree included angle. The purple uh, material is an inch and a half, and the joined material is a half inch thick. The first question is, is the joint details pre-qualified? Now, to answer that, we'll go to the code or to the steel manual, and we identify the critical variables that constitute pre-qualification. Expanding that slide for just a moment, we see that we have a root opening. And the root opening in our joint that we just looked at was a quarter inch, and that's pre-qualified. The included angle was 45 degrees, so that's pre-qualified. T1 can be unlimited in thickness, so that dimension is pre-qualified, and T2 also can be unlimited. So when we put all of that together, we can answer the question, is the joint detail pre-qualified? And the answer is yes. Now the next question is this. Is the joint detail appropriate for the application? And of course, I haven't shown any loading on this, so now let's assume this is a tensile a tension joint. And our question is, is it appropriate for that tensile kind of application? And there's nothing to give us any reason for concern on that particular detail. We should be good to go with a weld at that location. 